Good morning, guys. How's it going? So, uh, here's the long-awaited bike check on this build. Um, if you guys don't know the story, it took me a while to get back into riding mountain bikes after a seven or eight year hiatus off all things bike. Um, I broke myself really, really badly free riding out in a place I will not name. <laughs> out here in uh, Northern California in the Bay Area. Um, but yeah, I, I basically broke my collarbone. And if you guys know, I'm, I'm, I'm a full-time musician. Um, so that was really, really rough. I actually did a whole orchestra tour with one arm in Vicodin. That was, I mean, I, I thought it sounded great, but I was in Vicodin, so. <laughs> but anyways, I've gotten to road bikes um, and then I got into the whole ultra endurance thing, you know, doing the whole Everest things and uh, 200 milers and, and so on. And it took me a while to get back in the dirt. And for a while, I was revisiting all these mountain bike stuff on my gravel bike, which is why you'll see, you've seen videos of me riding downhill trails on drop bars and like 26 by 1.5 inch slick tires. Um, but anyways, I've been very fortunate to be in a very fortunate that the whole mountain biking community is super tight and everyone's willing to help everybody out um and yeah thanks to the whole ride sfo community um from guys i've known back in the day they're basically just trying to get me back to riding mountain bikes so that i don't die getting hit by a car <laughs> So this is the, the, the result. Um, and I was talking to some people earlier, like a while back too, about how the mountain bike community really is very different from many other kinds of communities. And not just mountain bikes, just cycling community in general. If you go look at uh, like cars, for example, right? If you know um, people, they're probably gonna hook you up with a good price for parts and stuff. Um, but cycling's very different in that regard. Like, um, people just, if they have something in their graveyard bin, which has just been sitting there for hella long, they're probably just gonna, like, give it to you as long as it gets used. And, uh, I've been really, I'm really, really fortunate. I'm really grateful to have a lot of friends who, uh, have helped me get back to riding mountain bikes. So, this is a 2008 2008, 2007, specialized pitch. It's got 140 to like 150 mil. I'm not sure which one it is. The website is kind of wishy-washy in that. It's probably 140. Um, it's a medium. I got this frame off from Alex Loxon, who I met when I was still a Grom. Um, and he was like, dude, you're riding that gravel bike. Like, do you need a mountain bike? Here's a frame. So he gave me a frame, which is really, really cool. This frame came from it came with a, a f some other Fox shock. I can't remember what it was, but just like an idiot, uh, I didn't know you had to pull one of the knobs up to twist it. And eventually, like when I when I turned it, uh, without pulling the knob off, <laughs> oil started spraying over. Um, and then Q, uh, Chris Kubody, Q, um, gave me another shock, but that one needed a rebuild. So I rode that thing for a while. It was a DHX Air 4.0. And then I finally got it replaced with this thing. I picked it up off Craigslist for like a hundred bucks or something. But that, that's that's the cool thing, right? Like people you know are probably just gonna like, it's been sitting in my graveyard bin for a while, just make use of it. And for people you don't know, they're just gonna hook you up anyways because they just wanna see people, more people on bikes, which is really awesome. So I picked this up from off Craigslist for a hundred bucks or so. Um, Dropper post. I got this off Al Aldana. It's, it's a specialized command post. Um, thanks, buddy. It's fucking solid. It's my first dropper post ever, and I never thought I'd ever need it, but oh my god, this shit's revolutionary. Uh, <laughs> got this off Al. Um, I got the front tire off Al, too. That's an XR4, Bunt Rager um, XR4. It's not bad. It does the trick, but yeah, it's kind of squirrely. My tire of choice has always been a mini DHF in the front and a high roller in the back. Um, but it's not bad for like a play bike. I'm not racing anymore, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I got the fork off Keith the Fibri. If you guys 
don't know Keith, check him out. He's the guy who works on the Sea Otter Slalom course stuff. Um, he runs the CCCX stuff. Um, and he's got a pretty cool, like, cyclocross and road program out in the Philippines, too. Um, but yeah, Keith DeFibri. Thanks for hooking me up with the fork. Um, various other things. Oh, yeah, the frame came with these cranks. I have no idea what they are. Just Shimano, probably a step before, um, below uh, Dior, and it came with a 32 tooth narrow wide. So that was that. These pedals <laughs> are my old pedals, which I've raced on for hella long. They're Shimano M737s. Uh, the bams kind of shot. They wiggle from side to side and up and down, but they still clip in. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, saddle? There's a Diamondback something saddle and the rear tire is a performance band, performance bike, which uh, if you guys don't know performance bikes, their parent company, I guess, just went bankrupt, so they're probably not going to be around for too much longer. But yeah, that's a performance bike brand, Forte Pisca 2.3. I got those from James Cortez. Uh, yeah, it works. The center knobs are almost non-existent anymore so it's really a semi slope which makes riding in the rain right now really fun <laughs> just have to really really lean it to the, like you'll just drift and all of a sudden you have sort of grip when you really lean it and boom you're back um yeah drive train it is 11 40 tooth cassette in the back and 32 narrow wide in the front um nine speed uh i got the cassette and uh Derailleur, that's a SRAM X9. I got it off my my graveyard build. It's a X9 shifter in the front as well. Um, it works just fine as a one by. I had to make shift with uh, you had to figure out a chain guide system. So chain guide that is actually a front derailleur. It's a SRAM XX direct mount, which I just limit screw it. It's a top guide. And then the bottom roller guy, whatever that is, um, just puts it in place and don't have droppage issues. Heavy? Sure, whatever, but it works. <laughs> it's my winter bike. It's the loner bike too. If anyone ever needs a bike and you're in the area, you're visiting or whatever, just hit me up, take this bike for a spin. Um, I got the roller, so yeah, drivetrain for the most part, shifter, derailleur, cassette, and chain guide top it was from my graveyard bin the roller and uh the wheels justin actually hooked me up with justin weber justin weber he's a mechanic out on joe's average joe's in alameda check him out dude is a fucking genius um he will make your dior derailleur lighter than an xtr by switching out bolts pulleys cages whatever he'll build uh bikes with headsets made out of four or five different headsets because of weight gram counting he's your man he's pretty solid but yeah he fixed the set of wheels um yeah by trimming it up replacing a spoke because i was an idiot uh yeah wheels i got these wheels from chris kibodi too q um these wheels have gone through four bikes at this point it was on a giant rain at first, and then it went on to a K2. Then it went on my gravel bike for a minute, and now it's on this thing. And because I've been riding this thing on the gravel bike, I totally beat the shit out of it, riding those skinny-ass tires and rocks, um, which is why Justin fixed my wheel up. It was pretty solid. So that was that. Um, yeah. Oh, the fork is an X-Fusion Velvet. It's 120 mil of travel up front. And I have a 140 in the back, which is a Fox X Evil, I guess. It's actually not too bad, surprisingly. Um, brakes, I had these in my graveyard bin. They're Elixir X9 SLs, carbon levers. Um, modulation is great. I've never bled them before, and they're still strong as fuck. And modulation is just SRAM modulation. I know people have had issues with the Elixirs. I've never had an issue. Works just fine. Bars are 780 mil uh, Kona branded 
bars, and that's like a 60 mil stem, big ass hunk of. It's, it kind of reminds me of the old Hasselfelds. You guys remember those Truvative Hasselfelds? Kind of like that. I took that off my operator because um, I got micro shit in the operator. And yeah, I guess that's that with this bike. With the heavy ass parts, especially look at that chunk of stem right there. Bike came out to 33 pounds, 33 pounds or 32.8, really close around the 33 pound mark. I probably have to weigh it again to figure it out. <laughs> but yeah, right about there. So it's not too bad in climbing. Um, it's a pretty fun bike, actually. Uh, especially since it's kind of like that whole era where um, bikes were really short. Um, yeah, which I think the dropped once running a 120 mil fork in the front helped with too, by the way, because that kind of like made the reach a little longer and the bottom bracket lower head angles a little steeper but whatever um but yeah this is the specialized pitch also known as the bitch which uh <laughs> yeah this is like one of the only bikes i actually haven't named um but yeah this is the loner bike or the winter bike or the one i just beat the shit out of um it is really flickable Probably because like I'm so used to riding downhill bikes, I can throw this thing around really well. Um, tight corners are not too bad on this. The tires are kind of like, eh, but whatever, man. Um, I have a set of tires which I'm putting on here that Justin gave me. I'll get to that when, when I'm not lazy. <laughs> yeah, it's actually not too bad as a fun little trail bike. I even like took it out jumping at Pacifica. Um, probably want to like air up the suspension for that, but. I mean, sure it bombed it out a couple times, or every time, but it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, 2008 Specialized Pitch, um, and that's it for this bike check, I guess. Let me know what you guys think. Um, oh, yeah, M short. So, um, brake hoses were really, really short. The, the routing for this is all through the down tube. And the brake hoses were too short, and Adam Schwartz at Oakland Service Course came up with this solution for me. These are, God, they're some kind of cable guide. I can't remember what they're called, but he suggested them. They're just zip tied on with the guide on the other side. And so I'm running uh, my brake and my uh, dropper post lever right there. Um, yeah. And so I'm routing that through the top tube. So thanks, Adam. Oakland Service Course, check him out. He, he deals with really, really high-end builds and custom builds uh, down in Oakland, pretty close to the lake. Uh, yeah, 2008 Specialized Pitch. Let me know what you guys think about the build. I, oh, I think I might have like 200 bucks in this build or something. <laughs> Not too bad, right? Um, yeah, man, you can ride a bike with all the bells and whistles, you can ride a five, six thousand dollar bike, but really, if you got a bike which rolls, it's fine. Um, especially if it's winter and you don't want to break anything. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. If you guys like the bike reviews or, or bike checks, let me know. I'm probably gonna do one for the operator at some point. Um, and you guys have probably seen the rest of my other bike checks, like the one on the Ostro Damler Altimo, my Everesting bike, and like the grav, the gravel bike and all that stuff. I also have a monkey bike if you guys want to see that shit. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think, and uh, you, you all have a good day.